What's up guys? If this crazy scene seems like a familiar one, it's because it is. It's five o'clock in the morning, pitch black. And I'm out for a run with the dogs because today I've got an early flight, this time to Germany. And by the way, it's bloody freezing. Oh my goodness. Last week on Electric Tuesday, I talked about uh, Williams and Williams Advanced Engineering and the things that they're doing outside of Formula One within their business. And I thought this week we should quickly touch on what McLaren are doing because McLaren are equally as impressive in some of the things they've managed to diversify their business into. One of which is right here at Heathrow Airport. So I've arrived in Germany, in Munich, but it was not a straightforward journey. So we had a, an issue back in Heathrow where the, the plane had a technical fault. Uh, we were about to board and all got offloaded, sent back into the terminal, had to wait for a new aircraft. And uh, it's a perfect example of where this, this as if by magic, um, this stuff that McLaren are doing at Heathrow really comes into effect because at moments like that, you, you know, the, both the airline and the airport have to move aircraft around, a huge number of people around. They're able to do that in the most efficient way possible, kind of minimizing the delays where people are, are, or aircraft are sat on the tarmac waiting for a gate to open up or waiting for slots to cross a runway. And what McLaren have done is used the simulation and predictive software, the, the modeling tools that they've created for Formula One, uh, which enable them to know exactly where other cars are around the racetrack at F1 Grand Prix. Uh, where, you know, whether if they're going to think about making a pit stop, they'll know exactly, having made the pit stop, where their car will come out back on the track, where they'll slot in to that train of cars. And it's that kind of predictive software that allows the huge operation that Heathrow is to control the movement of all of these planes and thousands of people around the ground section um, of this, you know, the world's busiest airport. So, uh, incredible bit of, uh, of ingenuity using some of the stuff that Formula One has developed, or McLaren have developed for Formula One, crossing over into another world. Uh, I think it's really interesting stuff. And today, it helped me out because we had a minimal delay. We got moved to a new airplane, uh, and it's easy to sort of forget the knock-on effects that those things will have in terms of flight schedule delays, runway slot delays, moving the, the service vehicles around the apron of the, of the airport, the buses that had to take us from one gate right around the other side of the airport to the other, uh, the new gate and the new aircraft and, and all of those things are all helped by this incredibly efficient uh, way of doing things developed by McLaren. taxi drivers just told me which I didn't realize stupidly I didn't realize this it's Oktoberfest I'm in Munich just down the road from Oktoberfest and I know it's not October but it's on now and unfortunately my flight home is uh, is later on this evening so I'm not gonna have time to go I'm gutted I've never been to Oktoberfest and I've come this close and still can't manage to go to it what an amateur <laughs> Is October Fest. <laughs> so these guys are all off to October Fest clearly. I've missed out again, but it does mean I don't have to put on one of these. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it, talk's done, uh, it went very well. I was talking to a company uh, which are a technology company but they do work in the pharmaceutical um, sector and uh, that of course brings me on to the next thing that McLaren uh, Applied Technologies, this arm of the McLaren group um, that they're involved with. They have got involved in healthcare and when I said in the title of this video that McLaren are saving our lives 
Um, it's true. And they're doing it using some of those technologies developed in Formula One, as I said. The way they've approached this whole process is by thinking about the way that uh, a racing driver and an engineer interact and the process of an engineer extracting the information, the right information, from a racing driver as quickly, as efficiently as possible and then using that information, that data, to then uh, affect the way that the car operates and trying to deliver the perfect racing car. Well, McLaren have looked at the healthcare situation and thought about the way that a patient interacts with a doctor and basically applied the same model. So when, a, when you go in to see your doctor or if you go for a specialist checkup and you go to see uh, the, the medical professional, that doctor, that medical professional is doing the same thing. It's trying to have an interaction with you as a, as a client, trying to extract the right information, and that's critical, the right information as quickly as possible to be able to then give you the right course of treatment or to set you on the right path to recovery. Um, and by doing that, what they've done is they've developed a series of technologies and a series of processes to make that uh, process more efficient. McLaren have developed um, wear a system of wearables that patients can, can wear to collect the, the right data, the specific data that's needed. Um, they've developed systems in machinery and uh, technologies built into hospitals and, and medical care centres that again will have sensors on that extract the exact data that's needed to affect that care. What can happen, of course, what is in completely inefficient, just as it is with race drivers and engineers, is when, an engine, when a race driver comes back and starts giving you all this information and feedback about the car that's not relevant to the problems that you might have. And that is exactly the same when patients go and see their doctors. So this Formula One thinking has been applied to all sorts of other areas of industry and areas of our life and is now starting to transform it just like Williams did and are doing McLaren are the other big Formula One team doing exactly the same they're diversifying from Formula One not in any way to the detriment of Formula One and lots of people said after the Williams video you know is this the reason they're struggling is it the reason are they putting too much focus on these kind of areas where they should be focusing on Formula One and no I don't buy that they're not these are not taking uh, resource away from Formula One to work on these programs. Completely separate entities, separate companies, um, but just using the Formula One brand and the Formula One expertise in marginal gains and looking for tiny little improvements, continuous improvements. It's exactly what I've been speaking about to these people today. Continuous improvement, no matter how small the advantage might be. You put enough of them together, it suddenly turns into a significant advantage. And McLaren and Williams have both become incredibly successful. They've both won awards uh, for doing this kind of thing, this kind of innovation off the back of their Formula One programs. I think it's something that Formula One should be incredibly proud of and should be shouting a bit more about. We all know about McLaren's success historically in Formula One. We all know they make sick, fast road cars. Did you know, though, that they also make a very expensive and one of the best road bikes in the world for S-Works? An incredible machine, which they've completely redesigned using simulation for the first time that that's been done in road bike design. Um, so they're revolutionising that kind of industry too. Um, did you also know that they completely transformed the way that Team GB's bobsleigh was designed uh, for the uh, World Championships a few years ago uh, by using the wind tunnel and the aerodynamic expertise that they have within the organisation and that led onto a World Championship gold medal. They're doing good things. To replace Paul Craig Toggle as shown and the air can be topped up by using this mouthpiece. That's me. Hello there. Right, two things quickly to finish off. First of all, I don't want you to think I'm some super health freak that gets up at 5 a.m. every morning to go running. I don't. Uh, I set myself this stupid little personal challenge that's running around my head when I came back from holiday in the summer that I was gonna go running every single when, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And I do that in the mornings, but not at 5 a.m. The only reason I did it yesterday at 5 a.m. was because I had the early flight, and I've got this stupid target that I don't wanna miss, because I've never missed a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday yet. So that's why I did it anyway. I'm not mental. 
Um, anyway, and the other one was uh, I thought I should mention some of the other things McLaren are into because they have this huge electronics business, incredibly successful, and I thought it was really relevant because I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, they supply the ECUs, electronic control systems, for every single car on the Formula One grid and have done for years. But they also do the same in IndyCar, they do the same in NASCAR, and they do the same in Formula E. Um, they've also now got this contract to supply the brand new Season 5 battery for every single Formula E car, which has uh, pretty much doubled the amount of energy density in this new battery that all Season 5 Formula E cars will run with enabling them to get rid of the mid-race car swaps and go faster, uh, drive them harder. So an incredible display of how that battery technology has leapt forward since Formula E first got involved, uh, first came on the scene. And McLaren were involved in the beginning. They supplied the electric motors to every single car in season one. So an incredible business built up, of course, you know, initially by Ron Dennis. It was his idea, it was his vision to diversify away from Formula One and they've done that, not only have they done that, but they've done that to an incredible level, class leading level uh, in lots of different ways. So I think it's a, it's a real achievement and something that hopefully McLaren and McLaren fans perhaps should be very proud of. Anyway, that is it for this week. Uh, thank you very much for everybody uh, for watching. Thank you. If you enjoyed it, please like it, share it around, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>